In the last lesson, we discussed the disk method and the washer method to find the volume generated when a certain area is revolved about an axis. In this lesson, we will discuss another method to find the volume generated that is called the shell method. Now, what is a shell? If you look here, this is a shell. What is the characteristic of a shell? You can see most of it is empty space. And uh, it is rather thin. Now, how do you find the volume of a shell? In the case of a disk, we know we found the volume of the disk as the face area multiplied by the thickness. Is that right? Pi r squared times dx. Now, how do you find the volume of a shell like this? Well, to do that, let's open up the shell. Now, here I have a, a, a shell. That is a shell. Is that right? Yes, and I open it up. What's the volume of this? The volume will be the face area multiplied by the thickness. In other words, the length multiplied by the width, multiplied by the thickness. Now, the length, if you see, becomes the circumference of the shell. Is that right? Yes, the length becomes the circumference. Now, what is the circumference of a circle? This is a circle over here. That's a circle. The circumference is 2 pi r. So, length multiplied by width. Now, in the case of a shell, the width becomes the height. So, the volume of the shell will be the circumference 2 pi r multiplied by the height. And that will give you the area of the curved surface. Multiplied by the thickness, that will give you the volume of the shell. Is that right? Okay, I'm going to um, show that to you one more time. Now, here I have a sheet of material of length L and width W. Now, you can roll it and make it into a shell. So, a flat sheet of plastic is of length L and width W, and the thickness of that is dx. What is the volume of the sheet? The volume of the sheet is length times width multiplied by, length times width gives you the area, multiplied by the thickness will give you the volume. So this is the volume dv of that sheet. Now, if the sheet is rolled into a hollow cylinder of length L and radius r, you get this. That is a shell. In fact, that is about the same kind of shell that I showed you earlier. But in my case, I roll the length into the circumference. And in this case, the circumference became the width. That's the only difference. Well, so the length is now the height of the shell, and the width became the circumference. Is that right? Yes. So the width W of the sheet is now become the circumference, the circumference of the shell, that is the width W, and the L became the height of the shell. All right? Now, what is the circumference of a circle of radius R? The circumference of a circle of radius r is 2 pi r. And therefore, the volume dv of the shell is length times width times dx. Is that right? The flat area times the thickness. And since w has now become the width of this, has now become the circumference of the shell, when W can be replaced by the circumference, which is 2 pi r, is that right? So the volume dV is now L times 2 pi r times dx. Now, if L and r are functions of x, 
Now, in our case, when we actually take functions to produce a shell, the length of the shell will be a function of x or a function of y, and the radius will be also a function of x or a function of y. Therefore, we can now write the volume of the shell is 2 pi times L of x times R of x dx, or it can be L of y, R of y, dy. So, remember this form of the volume dv of the shell we will be using as we move on. Now, L and R are functions of y, then dv will be 2 pi times L of y times R of y times dy. I hope you understood the concept in here that the volume of the shell will be L of y, L of y is actually the height, the height times the radius, the radius is, this is the center, that is the radius of the shell, so L of 2 pi times L of y times R of y times dy, or L of x times R of x times dx. Now, we will first consider the revolution on the y-axis. Now, let's look at the graph of a function f of x. Now, this is the graph of the function f of x. And uh, the area enclosed by this graph with the x-axis from x equal to a to x equal to b is the shaded area. And we need to revolve this about the y-axis. Now, we did this in the last lesson using the disk method. And when you use the disk method, remember we take an element area that is at right angles to the axis of revolution. But when it comes to the shell method, we take an area that is parallel to the axis of revolution. So our element area is going to be parallel to the axis of revolution. That's right. So we will use the shell method to find the volume generated when this area is revolved about the, all right, about the x-axis or we can do it also about the y-axis. Now, Take a strip of area dA of width dx parallel to the y-axis. Actually, we are going to revolve this area about the y-axis, not the x-axis. So change this into the y-axis. So remember, in the case of the disk method, we take an element area at right angles to the axis of revolution. In the case of the shell method, we take an element area parallel to the axis of revolution. So since we want to generate a volume by revolving this area about the y-axis, we are going to take an element area that is parallel to the y-axis. There we have the element area of area dA. And look at this, it is parallel to the axis of revolution. Well. In order to find the area, can you visualize, if this is now revolved about the y-axis, can you visualize the shell that is going to be generated? This dA, the thickness of this is dx, and that will be the thickness of the shell. So if you revolve this about the y-axis, you're going to generate a shell like this. Is that right? And the shell will have a height here, which we actually call L, and it has a radius. Now, what is the radius of the shell? The radius of the shell is actually the distance of the element area from the axis of revolution. If you revolve this, look at that, the circle generated, the axis will be at the center. So the radius will be this distance. Now, the distance, any distance measured from the y-axis is called x. 
So the distance of this element from the y-axis is x. What is the length of this element area? Now the length of the element area is the distance of the graph from the x-axis. And the distance of a point from the x-axis is called y. In other words, the graph of y equal to something, which is f of x. So the length of the element area is f of x. And the radius of the shell that is generated is x. I will repeat that as we go on. All right. Take note. For shell method, dA is taken parallel to the axis of revolution, unlike in the case of uh, disk and washer method, we took the element area at right angles to the axis of revolution. All right. What is the length of this area strip? I already explained. Think about this. What is the length of this uh, area strip? The length of the area strip is the distance of the curve of the graph of the function from the x-axis. So the length of the strip equal to the upper function minus the lower function. This is the graph of the upper function. This is the graph of the lower function, which is, of course, y equal to 0. So this is, say, y equal to something. And this is y equal to 0. In general, it is the length of the element area is the upper function minus the lower function. That is f of x minus 0. The upper function is f of x. The lower is f of x equal to 0, or y equal to 0. So the length of the strip is equal to f of x. And that is the the length of the shell, so we have L of x equal to f of x. What is the next information that we need to find the volume of the shell? We need the radius. We know the length, we now need to know the radius. Now look at the shell that is generated by revolving that area about the y-axis. That is the shell and that is the length. Now we need to find the radius of that shell. What is the radius of the shell? The radius of the shell is the distance of the element area from the y-axis. And the, a distance measured from the y-axis is x. Therefore, we say the distance of dA from the y-axis is x. The radius of the shell r of x equal to x. Now look at that. We obtained two important information about the shell. What are the two important information? L of x, the length of the shell or the height of the shell, how you may put it. It could be called the height of the shell or the length of the shell. We say the height of the shell or length of the shell, L of x equal to upper function minus the lower function. In this case, case it is f of x. The radius of the shell is the distance of the element area from the axis of revolution. In this case, it is x. Now, so the length of the shell is L of x equal to f of x, and the radius of the shell, r of x equal to x. What is the expression we just obtained for the volume generated for that shell? It will be 2 pi r, 2 pi r times L of x times dx. Is that right? So the volume of the shell is 2 pi times L of x, r of x, dx. Now, 2 pi times r of x is the circumference. Multipli multiplied by L of x will give you the curved area. Multiplied by dx will give you the volume. Remember this form, dv equal to 2 pi, l of x, r of x, dx. So in order to find that dv, these are the two information we need, l of x and r of x. <coughs> now the volume v is generated by revolving this area 
from x equal to a to x equal to b. In other words, this element area can vary in its position from x equal to a to x equal to b. You can have this element area anywhere you want and integrate all such volumes of the shell from x equal to a to x equal to b and that will be the total volume generated. So v equal to integral a to b 2 pi r of x l of x dx. Right. So v equal to 2 pi integral a to b r of x l of x dx. Now Revolution on the x-axis. If you want to revolve about the x-axis, how will you take the element area? Remember, for shell method, the element area has to be parallel to the axis of revolution. So, in order to revolve this area about the x-axis, dA of width dy is taken parallel to the x-axis. So, there is the element area of with the dy. Alright, to find the length of dA, look at that, the length of dA is the right function minus the left function. In the previous case, we had the top function minus the bottom function gives you the length of that shell. In this case, it must be the right function minus the left function that must be, that means the function must be written as functions of y. That's right. So, f of y is on the right and g of y is on the left. So, this is the graph of f of y and this is the graph of g of y. Of course, that is x equal to zero or g of y equal to zero. And therefore, the length of the element area is f of y minus g of y. And that is the length of the element area. L of y equal to f of y minus g of y. And that's the length of the element area. And when this dA is revolved about the x-axis, we generate a shell. Now look at the shell that is generated when this element area is revolved about the x-axis. Now, the radius, what is the radius of that shell? The radius is a function of y, because it says r y is actually the distance of the shell from the axis of revolution. Now, the axis of revolution is x, and the distance of the element from the axis is called y. You see that? So this is the radius. When this element is revolved about the x-axis, the radius is this, which is y. And so we say r of y, the radius equal to y. r of y equal y. So what are the two information you have? You have the length of the element area is f of y minus g of y. And the radius of the shell generated by revolving that element area about the x-axis is r of y equal to y. Now, put it together again. When you revolve about the y-axis, your element area is parallel to the y-axis. And the length of the element is the upper function minus the lower function. And the radius of the shell will be the distance from the y-axis to the element area, which is x, r of x equal to x. When you revolve the area about the x-axis, the length, the element area is parallel to the x-axis. The length of the element area is the right function minus the left function, and both functions are functions of y. And the radius of the shell generated is the distance of the element area from the x-axis, which is y. So r of y equal to y. Very important information 
as we move on with this concept. So you got L of Y equal to F of Y minus G of Y and R of Y equal to Y. And the volume dV of the shell generated then will be dV equal to 2 pi times R of Y, L of Y, dY. Look at it again. 2 pi times R of Y is the circumference of that circle. Multiplied by L is the area of the curved surface. Multiplied by the thickness dY, that will be the volume of the shell. And in order to find the total volume generated by revolving this whole area, integrate, integrate dV from y equal to c to y equal to d. So you have that is y equal to c and that is y equal to d. The total volume v equal to integral c to d. 2 pi r, 2 pi r of y, l of y, dy. Okay, that is an important way of uh, generating the volume of uh, revolution. I want you to watch how these areas revolve. Here there's an area, and that is the element area. And look at the way the element is revolved about the y axis to generate that shell. I want you to watch this animation carefully and that is one shell all right look at another one you got different shells are generated this time only one side is shown all right and now the other side is being built All right, now the whole area is going to revolve. We see how when the whole area is revolved about the y-axis, how the volume is generated. That's uh, really beautiful, isn't it? All right, what's the one more time? First, divide the area into different elements and take one element and revolve it, and that is the shell that you are generating. Watch that shell carefully. The shell has a length L and a radius. Look at the radius of the shell. Okay, we'll stop that. Let's now summarize everything we discussed so far in this lesson. So to use shell method to obtain the volume of revolution, we are going to use some of the following steps. Step one, take dA, the element area, parallel to the axis of revolution. To obtain the length of dA. Now, length of dA, if dA is vertical, the length of dA will be the upper function minus the lower function. If the element area is horizontal, the length of the element will be the right function minus the left function. And they must be functions of y, is that right? The vertical functions are functions of x and the others are functions of y. So obtain the length dA. Now, if dA is vertical, then L of x is G of x minus F of x, both functions of x. That is, function above minus function below. If dA is horizontal, then you have functions of y. L of y equal to G of y minus F of y. That is the right function minus the left function. Third step, obtain the radius of revolution. Well, the radius of revolution is actually the distance measured from the axis to the element. And in the case of the revolution about the y-axis, the distance from the y-axis is always x. And the distance measured from the x-axis is y. So radius r of x or r of y is the distance of dA from the axis of revolution. That is either x or y. And use the appropriate formula to obtain v. We have looked at those appropriate formulas. Is that right? 
because dv equal to 2 pi r of x l of x dx or 2 pi times r of y l of y dy depending on the axis we take so v equal to 2 pi times integral a to b r of x l of x dx that is for revolution about the y-axis yes and the other one will be v equal to 2 pi integral c to d r of y l of y dy well we are now ready to do a problem use the shell method to find the volume of revolution of the area enclosed by y equal to x squared y equal to zero and x equal to four about the y-axis <coughs> now here you can see the graphs are actually drawn here although i didn't intend to draw this in here this came in accidentally there y equal to x squared is this graph y equal to zero what is the graph of y equal to zero that is the x-axis <coughs> and x equal to 4 is this so we are looking at the area enclosed by the graph of y equal to x squared y equal to 0 and x equal to 4 you begin by drawing the graphs of the given functions draw the graphs of y equal to x squared y equal to 0 which is the x-axis and x equal to 4 all right let's draw those graphs you have uh, y equal to x squared and of course y equal to 0 is the x-axis and x equal to 4 and shade the area enclosed to shade this area okay to revolve this area about the y-axis how do you take the element area in this case we are revolving about the y-axis that means the element area you take must be parallel to the y-axis. So we take the element area parallel to the y-axis. There you go. And what is the width of that area? That is dx. Now, what is the length of dA? dA is vertical. That means the length of dA will be the upper function minus the lower function. Upper function is x squared lower function is zero so l of x equal to x squared minus zero that's equal to x squared and there you got the length of the element area is x squared when this dA is revolved about the y-axis what is the radius of the shell generated the a shell will be generated the radius of that will be the distance of the element area from the axis of revolution. The distance measured from the y-axis to the element area is x. That's right. So your radius r of x equal to x. We have now all the important information. We have L of x, the length or height of the shell. We have the radius and therefore we can write the expression for the volume of this l of x equal to x squared and r of x equal to x and the thickness of the shell is dx therefore the volume dv of the shell will be dv equal to 2 pi r of x l of x dx 2 pi times 2 pi times the radius will give you the circumference multiplied by L of x gives you the area of the curved surface times dx will give you the volume of the shell <coughs> and what all we need to do to find the total volume is to integrate this from x equal to a to x equal to b now x equal to a is 0 x equal b that is x equal 4 <coughs> so this will be dv is 2 pi r of x r of x is x and l of x is x squared dx that will be 2 pi x cubed dx
Okay. Now, the position of dA can change from x equal to 0 to x equal to 4. Therefore, the volume V generated by revolving this area enclosed about the y-axis is obtained by integrating this dV from x equal to 0 to x equal to 4. And that will be 2 pi integral a to b, integral 0 to 4, x cubed dx. Is that right? 2 pi is a constant. <coughs> that will be 2 pi times x cubed dx integrated gives you x to the power of 4 over 4. And the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is 4. And again, the lower limit will not yield you any value, so you need only use the upper limit. That will be 2 pi times 4 to the power of 4 over 4. That will be 128 pi is the volume generated by revolving this area about the y-axis. I hope that is clear. All right. Let's now use the same area, the area enclosed by y equal to x squared, y equal to 0, and x equal to 4 about the x-axis. What is the difference? The difference is when you want to revolve it about the x-axis, you need to take the area parallel to the x-axis. But then the functions have to be functions of y. You need the right function and the left function. That's the difference. So, you need to write y equal to x squared as a function of y, or solve for x. Now tell me, y equal to x squared, when expressed as a function of y, what would that be? x squared equal to y, or x equal to plus or minus square root of y. And you need only the, the positive part. All right. Take dA of width dy parallel to the x-axis. Again, let's obtain the diagonal. That is y equal to x squared. That is x equal to 4. And this is y equal to 0. And that's the area. This time we revolve it about the x-axis. And so we take the element area dA parallel to the axis that means the width of the element area is now dy. So express the functions to the left and right of dA as functions of y. Functions of y means it, it must read x equal to something. Well, this is already in that form, x equal to 4. And this has to become a function of y. And we talked about it. It is x equal to square root of y. So solving for x gives x equal to square root of y. So this function is x equal to square root of y, and this function is x equal to 4. Therefore, tell me what is the length of this element area. Length of the element area is the right function minus the left function. So that will be 4 minus square root of y. The function on the right is x equal to 4. That is g of y equal to 4. The function on the left, therefore the length of dA is the right function minus the left function. g of y minus f of y, that is 4 minus square root of y. That is the length L of y. All right, so the length of the element area, L of y, is 4 minus square root of y. And what is the radius? Radius of revolution, when you want to revolve this area above the x-axis, the radius is the distance of the element from the x-axis. And what do you call the distance measured from the x-axis is called y. Therefore, r of y equal to y. Now we have all the information that we need. We have L of Y, we have R of Y, therefore what is DV? DV equal to 2 pi times R of Y, L of Y, DY. And in order to find the total volume, we need to know 
this dA can be placed from y equal to c to y equal to d. So we need to find the limits of integration. Now, one limit we know that is zero. This is y equal to zero. But what is that limit? This limit is found by finding the point of intersection between y equal to x squared and x equal to 4 or x equal to square root y and x equal to 4. That means x equal to square root y equal to x equal to 4 at this point. So, equate them. Square root y equal to 4 gives you y equal to 16. So, this is the point y equal to 16. That means this element area can change its position from y equal to 0 to y equal to 16. That's right. Now, therefore, the volume of revolution is v equal to 2 pi integral c to d r of y l of y dy. Now, we have all this information. That will be 2 pi integral 0 to 16 r of y is y, l of y is 4 minus square root y dy. Now, let's distribute that. That will be 4y minus, look at that, y times square root of y. What is that equal to? Square root y is y to the power of 1 half. So y times y to the power of 1 half is y to the power of 3 over 2. That's right. So, that will be 2 pi times integral 0 to 16, 4y minus y to the power of 3 over 2 dy. Can you integrate that now? Integrating 4y dy gives you 4 times y squared over 2. And 2 cancels with the 4 gives you 2y squared. So integral of 4y dy will be 2y squared. Is that right? Think about it. Minus, what is integral of y to the power of 3 over 2 dy? It'll be y to the power of 3 over 2 plus 1 over 3 over 2 plus 1. And what is 3 over 2 plus 1? It's 5 over 2. So this will be 4 times y squared over 2 minus y to the power of 5 over 2 over 5 over 2 from 0 to 16. And that is 2 pi times now, replace your y by 16, 4 times 16 squared divided by 2, minus 16 to the power of 5 over 2 over 5 over 2. Now, again, you can see very many times this mistake is repeated because of copying and pasting. We, I have used the upper limit. There is no need for the, using the lower limit because that will give you 0. I have already used the upper limit. That means there will be no limits written here. So you've got to cancel that, cut it away. We have actually used it. We need to now simplify it. What is the value of this? The 16 squared times 4 divided by 2. So 16 squared is what? 256 multiplied by 2. And uh, do that on your own. What is 16 to the power of 5 by 2? You see, this 5 by 2 is the same as square root. So this is square root 16 raised to the power of 5. And remember, this 2 will go up. So I'm going to leave it for you to simplify on your own and see whether you get this. 1024 pi divided by 5 is that answer. Okay. Let's move and do another one. Use the shell method to find the volume of revolution of the area enclosed by y equal to 2x, x equal to 0, and y equal to 4 about the y-axis. Now the most important part of a problem like this is draw the graphs and identify the area that is specified here. Alright, y equal to 2x, draw the graphs of y equal to 2x. Can you visualize how the graph look like y equal to 2x? x equal to 0. x equal to 0 is the 
y axis and then y equal to 4. y equal to 4. Let's draw those graphs. Alright, y equal to 2 x is this. x equal to 0 is the y axis and this is y equal to 4. And what is the area that we want to enclose by all these? y equal to 2 x, y equal to 4, x equal to 0 is this area there. And this area needs to be revolved about where? about the y-axis. We need to revolve this about the y-axis. Alright. First of all, take dA with... We, we need to take the element area that is parallel to the y-axis. So, when you take parallel to the y-axis, it will be like this. And what is the width of that area? the width of the area will be dx. So the width will be dx. What is the length of that area? Well, remember the area is vertical, therefore the length is the upper function minus the lower function. The upper function is y equal to 4, the lower function is y equal to 2x, therefore the length of the element is 4 minus 2x. All right. What is the radius when you revolve this about the y-axis? That's what you're going to do. What's the radius of the shell generated? Radius is the distance of the element from the y-axis, which is called x. Is that right? All right. Let's write down these things. The length of dA is L of x equal to 4 minus 2x, the upper function minus the lower function. And r of x, the radius, equal to the distance of the element from the y-axis, which is x. And now, what we need to find is, what are the limits? Now, limits, x can change from 0 up to here, and we need to find that point. How do you find that point? That point occurs where 2x and 4 crosses, in other words, uh, set these two functions equal to each other. 2x equal to 4, and that gives you x equal to 2. So this is the point x equal to 2. That means the element area can change its position from x equal to 0 to x equal to 2. And now we are ready to write down the expression for the volume. The volume of revolution is 2 pi square integral a to b r of x, l of x, dx. We have all those values there. That will be 2 pi integral 0 to 2. r of x is x and l of x is 4 minus 2x, dx. Multiply them out. That will be 2 pi times integral 0 to 2, 4x minus 2x squared, dx. And let's integrate that. What will be integral 4x dx? It'll be 4 times x squared over 2 minus integrating 2x squared dx will give you 2 times x cubed over 3. So that will be 2 pi 4 multiplied by x squared over 2 minus 2 multiplied by x cubed over 3. And as usual, we don't need to worry about the lower limit because it is zero. Both these x's becoming zero will not give you any yield. So put the upper limit, set x equal to 2. That will give me uh, 4 times 2 squared over 2 minus 2 times 2 cubed over 3. Again, those limits don't appear here. I forgot to cancel them. So that must go. So take care about that. When you're watching, you have this PowerPoint with you, isn't it? So cut that off because we have used them already. And now simplify this. This will be 16 over 2. That will be 8. And that will be 16 over 3. Is that right? And that will be 16 pi over 3. And check if that is correct. You can check that on your own and make sure that that is correct. Alright. 
How about another one? Find the volume generated by revolving the area enclosed by y equal to x squared and y equal to 4x minus x squared about the line x equal to 2. All right, what I would like you to do is pause the video, go and draw these diagrams and identify the area enclosed by these two graphs, y equal to x squared and y equal to 4x minus x squared, and then come back and watch, all right? So I'm going to do that here. Yeah. Draw the graphs of y equal to x squared. You know how that's going to look like. And y equal to 4x minus x squared. And x equal to 2. x equal to 2 is a vertical line through x equal to 2. All right, let's draw those graphs. That's y equal to x squared. And look at the graph of y equal to 4x minus x squared. And where is... That's the area that we are looking for. The area enclosed by y equal to x squared, y equal to x squared, and y equal to 4x minus x squared. And we need to revolve it about the line x equal to 2. Now, first of all, let's find the points of intersection because we need the limits. Well, one point of intersection is 0, you can see here, but what is that point? How do you find the point of intersection where y equal to x squared meets y equal to 4x minus x squared? So set these two equal to each other and solve for x. 4x minus x squared equal to x squared. Can you solve for them? Well, take this x squared to the left side. You get 4x minus x squared minus x squared equal to 0. And Combine this and factor a 2x out. That is 2x times 2 minus x equal to 0. That will give you x equal to 0 and x equal to 2. So this is x equal to 0 and that is x equal to 2. And of course this is the axis of revolution x equal to 2. We need to revolve this area about that line. Okay. Now tell me what do we do here? What is the first thing to do? Well, we've got to take an element area dA of width dx. How do you know if the width is going to be dx or dy? You see, if the element area is vertical, its width will be dx. If the element area is horizontal, its width will be dy. In this case, we want the element area parallel to the axis of revolution. The axis of revolution is x equal to 2. And therefore, the element area is parallel to that axis, which is vertical. There you go. So, we got the element area dA of width to dx. Now tell me, what is the length of dA? Well, the length of dA is the upper function minus the lower function. What is the upper function? y equal to 4x minus x squared. The lower function is y equal to x squared. So the length L of x is the upper function 4x minus x squared minus the lower function is x squared. And that will be 4x minus 2x squared is the length of the... Okay. I want you to now look at this and tell me what is the distance of this element area from the axis of revolution. Remember, we need to find the radius of revolution. When you take this element area and revolve it, the radius is the distance of the element from the axis of revolution. What is this distance? Can you figure that out? Well, to figure that out, what is the total distance from the y-axis to here, x equal to 2? From the y-axis to x equal to 2, that total distance is 2. Well, we want to find this distance, is that right? That means if you have the total distance and subtract to this distance, what is that distance called? The distance of the element from the y-axis 
Any distance measured from the y-axis is called x. So this is x and this is 2. Therefore, the distance of the element area from the axis of revolution is 2 minus x. Alright, so the distance of dA from x equal to 2 is, this is your x, and that is 2, therefore the distance of the element area, this is 2 minus x. That's right. So this is your radius of revolution, the r of x equal to 2 minus x. We have L of x is 4x minus 2x squared r of x equal to 2 minus x squared and we have everything that we need we set up the integration the limits of integration is from x equal to 0 to x equal to 2 let's set it up the volume of revolution v is can you remind me the equation 2 pi integral a to b r of x l of x dx it's a very simple thing so v equal to 2 pi integral 0 to 2 r of x l of x dx r of x is 2 minus x l of x is 4x minus 2x squared all right there we have that means you need to now multiply distribute and simplify and that's your job all right so that will be integral 0 to 2 I'm repeating that step and uh, when you multiply it you get 8x minus 8x squared plus 2x cubed. I want you to do this on your own. Multiply this 2 times 4x is 2x, 2 times negative 2x squared is 4x squared minus 8x plus 2x cubed and then simplify. Alright, we are now ready to integrate. Let's integrate each of those. What is integral 8x dx? That will be 8 times x squared over 2 minus 8 times x cubed over 3 plus 2 times x to the power of 4 over 4. That should be very simple there. So 2 pi multiplied by 8 times x squared over 2 minus 8 times x cubed over 3 plus 2 times x to the power of 4 over 4. We can now apply the upper limit. There is no need to apply the lower limit because it will be 0. And replace your x by 2. That will be 8 times 2 squared over 2 minus 8 times 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 2 to the power of 4 over 4. Again, you don't need these limits. They have been used. All right? All right? Okay, I, I pinch my ears for that. Or I simplify this. I don't think you need my help for that. And that will be, that is 16. This is 64 over 3. And that is 8. And simplify that. We'll give you 16 pi over 3. And these are actually beautiful ways of using calculus to obtain the volume of genera uh, volume generated and I'm sure you are enjoying doing it once you understand it you enjoy it. if you don't understand it you struggle with it so let me know if you need further assistance all right let's try this one use the shell method to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equal to 2 minus x y equal to 0 and x equal to 4 about the x-axis. Alright? Can you stop the video now and try draw these graphs and identify the region that we're going to revolve? Do that now. y equal to 2 minus x. y equal to 0, that is the x-axis. And x equal to 4. Alright? I'm going to draw that, those graphs for you. There you go. Well, y equal to 2 minus x is this. And y equal to 0 is the x-axis. And x equal to 4 is this. So which is the area that we are looking for? The area enclosed by all these three is that area. 
All right, we need to revolve it about the x-axis. There you go. And we are using the shell method. Well, we can actually use the disk method there probably easier. Is that right? But since we are discussing the shell method, we need to use the shell method. All right. To start with, we need to obtain or draw an element area dA parallel to the axis of revolution. Since we are revolving about the x-axis, that is our element area. All right. Can you identify? some of the things that we need to know. Well, we need to know the length of the element area. Now, the element area is horizontal. That means, first of all, you need to represent these functions as x equal to. So y equal to 2 minus x will become x equal to 2 minus y. So represent this as a function of y as x equal to 2 minus y. And this is already x equal to 4. So the length of this element is the right function minus the left function. The right function is x equal to 4. The left function is x equal to 2 minus y. All right. What is the radius of revolution? If you revolve this area about the x-axis, the radius will be this. Is that right? And what is that? That's negative y, isn't it? That distance is negative y. That's right. Okay, let's put down some of these. In order to find the length of dA, we need to write the functions on the left and right of dA as functions of y. So y equal to 2 minus x need to be written by solving for x as x equal to 2 minus y. So, this is now called x equal to 2 minus y. That's right. And this is x equal to 4. You see, why did I put this brace here? Showing that distance measured from the y-axis to the graph is actually called x equal to 2 minus y. And this is x equal to 4. So, what is L of y? L of y is the right function minus the left function. 4 minus the quantity 2 minus y. That is the length L of y. And simplify that. That will be L y equal to, equal to 2 plus y. 4 minus 2 plus y is 2 plus y. Now, dA is below the x-axis. That means, what is the distance of dA from the x-axis? The distance of dA from the x-axis is negative y, isn't it? So, your radius of revolution is this distance, which is negative y. That is r of y equal to negative y. Well, we have now all the quantities we need. L of y equal to 2 plus y r of y equal to negative y. We can now set up, if you know, the limit of integration. This dA can change from this point to here. y equal to c to d. What is the c? The c is the point where 2 minus y equal to 4. So we need to do that. To find the limit, we solve y equal to 2 minus, no, x equal to 2 minus y is equal to x equal to 4. So we get 2 minus y equal to 4 or y equal to negative 2. So your limits of integration is y equal to negative 2 to y equal to 0. This dA can change its position all the way from y equal to negative 2 to y equal to 0. Therefore, what is the volume of revolution? It's 2 pi integral c to d r of y l of y dy. And c is negative 2, d is 0. Your r of y is negative y, l of y is 2 plus y. All right, now multiply this out. That would be negative 2y minus y squared dy. And integrate this. 
negative 2y dy integrated will be negative 2 times y squared over 2 that will be negative y squared and minus y squared dy integrated gives you y cubed over 3 so that will be 2 pi times negative 2 times y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3 now this time your upper limit is 0, the lower limit is negative 2. So replace y by 0, this will be 0. So the upper limit is 0. Then subtract, use the lower limit. So how, how do we do that? Look at this, 2 pi times. When you put y equal to 0, the whole thing will become 0. That's the upper limit. Minus, in parentheses, that's the quantity. Replace y by negative 2. That is, you notice I cancelled these two twos. So negative y squared, negative 2 all squared, negative y is negative 2 and square it, minus y cubed is negative 2 raised to the power of 3 over 3, and simplify that. This will be 4, and that will be negative 4. This will be negative 8, with the negative sign will be positive 8, so that will be positive 8 third. So there will be negative 4 plus 8 third, and with this negative sign, it will be 4 minus 8 third. Alright, let's multiply that. That will, be, uh, that will be 4 minus 8 third, and multiply by 2 pi and simplify. You get the result to be 8 pi over 3. Another very interesting and challenging sometimes, is that right? Problem. Okay, go over this and try to do this on your own to make sure that you can do one like this.